Shalom. I'm Danny. Uh, I'm a student. I read Bible, studying more about the biblical manners, understanding. And I do read uh, Muslim books. Uh, now, I'm not relating to all the question what Bible and Quran has. Uh, this is something related to my friend, who is my best friend. His name is, uh, uh, no, don't want to take it, sorry. Now, he is married, and due to some reason, uh, he's uh, planning to divorce his wife. And I find it out that that was a very small reason that he wants to divorce his wife. And secondly, uh, yesterday I was just reading this Mumbai Mirror at midday, that 112 years old guy, uh, Muhammad from Somali, he's uh, getting married, or, sorry, get, got married to this 13-year-old girl, Safiya. And I was very disturbed to answer my friend because I just asked one of my friends and he told, this is what we learn and this is what we return and this is what we follow. So I just went on to the internet as is that this is the easiest way I see because I uh, don't get a chance like a Zakir brother for you to question it. So just I'll just read it for you for, if you give me a chance to read it from uh, what I found it from the internet regarding this uh, justification and the relationship which Muhammad had. Is that a true, or you just help me out to come out of this issue, and I can go to my friend and say that this is what exactly the Quran teaches. I'll read do it for you, you want sir. to read or do you want me to answer? I'll just read it first for you. So, but you aren't satisfied with the answer, no? Uh, whatever, you may say, hope I answer so the question. You're not satisfied with the answer. No, hope so you say. So what the paper says, forget about it. Okay. If you're satisfied with the answer, what you have in your hand, then that's uh, sufficient. Actually, if you're not I, satisfied, I'll give you the answer directly. Just let me read it. Okay, no. okay, take it. Brother, no brother, put it in just five sentences in precise form. Otherwise, don't read it. I'll do, th I'll do that for you, sir. Uh, this is actually, let me uh, just quote it uh, from Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, book number 62, which Zabir uh, uh, bin Abdullah says uh, when he got married, uh, Hazrat Muhammad says, what type of lady have you married? He replied, I married to a matron. He said, Muhammad, why don't you have a liking for a virgins and for a fondling them? Zabir also said, Hazrat Muhammad said, why don't you marry a young girl so that you might play with her and she with you? Now, it's, uh, I was like a little bit disturbed. This is the preference of uh, Hazrat Muhammad or after reading Bukhari volume number five, he you said- You are more interested in reading the hadith rather than the question you posed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Correct, no? Uh, I just See, got you it, ask so me I a question, it. I give you the answer. You want to read the answer of somebody else because you want to quote the hadith? Quote directly. Yeah, so because I, I get an answer from you also. That's See, why I'm quoting it to if you. If you have two plus two, I don't know the answer. I want to tell what other people said. Why are bother? I'll give you the answer directly. It is four. What other people said, seven, eight, ten, forget about it. And that's why I came over here, sir. That's the reason why you're reading somebody else's answer if you're not satisfied. Okay. Correct? Yeah. That means I'll have to comment on both. On the question as well as the answer. Correct? Okay. I'll do both, no problem. <laughs> See, what is the Niyah is important. If your Niyah was to get the answer, why Muhammad, 112 years old, 113 years old, married at 13 years old, the answer I've given you. But you also wanted the answer of Prophet Muhammad, correct? Yes, because... So directly, same. what do you have to say? I'm not satisfied with the answer given on the internet, given on the paper. Directly ask the question on the hadith rather than beating around the bush. I'll give both the answers. Okay. I'll give both the answers. Hope I'm satisfied with your answers too. Inshallah. Inshallah. That depends upon you. If yes, I sir. say two plus equal to four, you said no, it is five. I can't help it. I'll, I'll take it what you say, but I'll believe what I can believe it. Sure, sure. You have to believe what you believe. You can't believe what I believe until you believe what I believe. True, sir. Because it's not law of contradiction. <laughs> Sorry? Please go ahead. Sorry, what did you say? Please go ahead uh, because I want to know the answer yes. from you. As far as Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is concerned. Fine. I'll come to it later on. Regarding the man by the name of Muhammad, you said, no? Yeah, because it's just some person from African Somalia. countries. Somalia. Somalia. From Somalia, 112 years old, you said? Yeah. Married a girl of 13 years old. Yes, sir. And it's a fifth marriage. Fifth marriage. Yeah. Fifth marriage? Yes, not, sir. Not five together, maybe one he married uh, and divorced. Fifth, and fifth then, I said. Uh, yes. The Pachwa Shadi. Pachwa Shadi, but Ek Doko divorce, you can say that. At any given time, you can't have more than four. Now, coming to the answer why. In Islam, you can marry a woman the moment she gets matured. If she reaches puberty, you can marry. That is Islam. Fine? A woman to marry. For a man, 
the moment he reaches puberty till he dies. He can marry anyone. Choice is his. Would you marry a woman 15 years older to you? No. No. Your choice. But the Prophet Muhammad married. His choice. Okay. Prophet Muhammad at the age of 25 married a woman, Hazrat Khatija, may Allah be peace with her, who was 40 years old. You will not marry. I will not tell you you have to marry. It's your choice. Now he wanted to marry a woman 15 years older to her because she was pious. Who are we to object? He's willing and the woman is willing. When Mia Bivi Razi, what will he do, Kazi? Because... Uh... Wait, wait. Let me answer. Please don't interrupt. You pose the question. I said sorry, sir. <laughs> yes, and I accept it. No problem. So the husband and wife, who are we to object? That woman wants to cover her head. You said don't cover the head. Are why? Are she wants to cover her head and the president of France said women should not cover that. Why? I mean, he wants to enjoy seeing women. He can go on the Miami beach. Why does he want to do it in France? Does it make sense? Subjugating. That woman doesn't feel subjugated. He's feeling subjugated. Why? He's feeling subjugated because he cannot enjoy women. He cannot enjoy the lust. So the problem is in him, not in the woman covering the head. But the man is 112 years old. Medical science tells us even a man of 112 years can procreate, can give birth to a child. True? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm a medical doctor. No, he wants to marry a 13-year-old girl who has reached puberty. What is your problem? You don't give your daughter to him. Who, no, don't give. Am I telling you? Am I telling your sister to marry him? No. No, if the parents also agreed and the girl agreed, she may be liking that man. 112 years. What a pious man. Reminds me of the Sahaba. I sacrifice everything. Because our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you marry a spouse, you look for four things. Virtue, nobility, wealth, and beauty. The best among this is virtue. And if a woman of 13 years old finds a virtuous man of 112 years, I would prefer if I know he's virtuous, if I know, not any Tom, Dick, and Harry. I would not mind giving my daughter if I know that he's a virtuous man and will see to it that he takes my daughter to Jannah, I would not mind. But after verifying, he's such a virtuous man. Remind me of the Saba, the caliber of Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali. May Allah be pleased with them all. Why not? But today we see more for beauty, more for wealth. I'm not saying that the man of Somalia was virtuous. I don't know. I don't know. But can it be possible? Yes. Chances are less. Can it be possible? Yes. Chances are less. Why not? If the girl is willing, therefore I said in my talk, the marriage can only solemnize if, if the man and woman agree. That does not mean tomorrow a man, even of 50 years come then, ask my daughter, I will not give. If I said he's as virtuous as, as the Khulfa Rashidin, I cannot find a better match. I cannot find. I cannot find a better match. What you have to realize that maybe that girl found that man to be virtuous. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't interviewed her. I haven't interviewed him. Maybe that man found that girl virtuous. I don't know. So if the man and the woman agree, who are you and me to interfere? Why are we trying to interfere their rights? Now you may have married a girl, I don't know, good or bad. You may think she's beautiful. Someone may think she's ugly. And someone says, why have you married a... Sorry, I'm not getting personal. Your wife may be beautiful, mashallah. But someone comes and objects, why have you married an ugly woman? You will say, what is bothering you? I find her to be beautiful. Who are you to interfere? Will you get angry or not? Will you get angry or not? Beauty is subjective. Someone comes and tells you, oh, brother, whatever your name is. You know, your wife is so ugly. You said, you mind your own business. That's my wife. Why are you interfering? If somebody comes and criticizes your wife, that is your choice. So as far as that 112 year Somali man is concerned and the 13 year girl is concerned, chances is very negligible, 0.001%. But if both agree, who are we to interfere? Coming to the answer of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that why don't you marry a younger woman, virgin woman? The Prophet may be knowing how that Sahaba is. There's a person who came and said that while I'm fasting, can I kiss my wife? The Prophet said, yes, you can. 
And another Sahaba comes, can I kiss my wife? The Prophet said, no. So the Sahaba said, first one you said yes, second one you said no. Why? Because he knew that the first man could control his desire. While fasting, even after kissing the wife, he will not go beyond that. The second person, once he kisses his wife, he will break his fast. He will go beyond that. Prophet knew, you don't know, I don't know. Similarly, the Prophet may be knowing that if he marries a matron, maybe yet he will go after beauty. So Prophet advises him. But what did the Prophet do? The first woman he married was 15 years older to him. 15 years which you wouldn't like doing. You just told me that, correct? Yes. So the Prophet, he knows because he found piety in Hazrat Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. Therefore, she's one of the four pious women in the world. So the Prophet knows. Like I being a doctor, I may give one medicine to one person, second person, second medicine. You ask, why am I changing medicine? Because I'm a doctor, I know. You're not a doctor. So the Prophet gives different advice to different people depending upon the situation. You don't know what the Prophet knows. And do you think what the Prophet said is wrong? It's right. Some people may like younger girl, some people may like older girl. So what you have to realize that it is nothing wrong. It is the advice given by the Prophet. Did he say something which is wrong? No, perfectly right. But see his lifestyle. All the women he married, except for one, only one was virgin. All of them, they were either divorcees or they were widowed. Uh, sir, actually, it's not liking or unliking getting married to 112. Brother, you ask me the question, I give the reply. I'm asking the question, someone objects. Sir, to but you. how does Quran relate to this people? Which Simple people? Question. Which people? Uh, these people, those who are getting married in this particular area, they're liking or don't liking? They like something The Quran else. says, do not inherit women against her wishes. Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 19. But if the woman wants and the man wants, who are you and I to prevent? Who are you and I to prevent? What is bothering you? I'm asking the question. If he finds piety in that young lady and that young lady finds piety in that elderly man, what is bothering you and me? Tell me. That is it unmedical? No. Can they procreate? Yes. What is the problem? Imagine someone comes and tells you, why have you married a black woman? Why have you married a white woman? I mean, that's your choice. In Islam, a woman becoming black or white does not make a superior inferior. What the Prophet said, the best is virtue. Now, why did the man of Somalia, at the age of 112, married 13? I don't know. I'm least really bothered to know. Is it logical? Yes, chances are very less possible. Same thing what the Prophet advised. So I'm asking you the question, if the girl and the boy are agreeing, why are you interfering with the choice is my question. Do you have a right to interfere is my question. I'm asking you a question, do you have a right to interfere when the husband and wife are doing something which they like? It's not going against the Quran. It is not even jeopardizing your rights. Sir, may I answer? Yes. Sir, again, uh, is their liking or not liking, I'm not interfering in them. They may like 112 years ago, old, uh, old man or 13 years. But my thing is, how this Quran words related to these people, like they are doing it. What Brother, they are doing is? Did you hear my answer? The reason for criteria to get married is you should reach puberty. Have they reached puberty or not? Can a 13-year-old girl reach puberty, yes or no? Do you know the answer? No. Can she reach puberty? Uh, 13 years? Yes. You don't uh, know science. Your doctor, sir, please tell me. In India, Yes, sir. In Delhi, the report came. If a girl reaches puberty by the age of 10, nothing to be worried about. Age of 10 also. It's very common. Many girls, hundreds of girls, who are less than 13 and they have reached puberty. Many. It's no problem. So once you reach puberty, finish. You may have preference, okay. The Indian law says 18 years, Indian law. Indian law, if he was an Indian, it would have been illegal according to the Indian law. America says 16 years. Now who's right? America or India, I'm asking you the question. 16 years or 18 years, who is right? According to their law. Ah, their law. <laughs> This is according to the Quranic law. Yes. Very good answer. So this is Very what good Quran answer. Is the problem is that when America says 16, you have no problem. When Quran says 13, what is your problem? I didn't say no problem. You can Finish. marry. No problem. Also. Thank you. Then we got the answer. Quran says as long as they agree, there is no problem. In Texas, in Texas, the American law says a woman should be minimum 16 years old. In India, if a 16-year-old girl gets married, illegal, haram, prohibited. 
in Texas, because the Texans, they marry at an early age. There's a special law for women of Texas. At the age of 14, they can get married. Now, what's the answer? Do you agree with the women of 14 years in Texas to get married? Right or wrong? Again, I said, sir, it's the, their law. Their law, correct. Who are you to object? I didn't object I'm asking you a question. In America, if a 115-year-old man marries a 14-year-old girl, is it allowed or not in Texas? Allowed. So when Texas allows, so why can't the Quran allow? Oh, it may not go down your throat. No problem, you don't marry. I don't know whether you live to London 12 years or not. Uh, no, I don't want to be. <laughs> but, but even if you let, live, let God wish if it. you don't want to marry, it's your choice. It is the choice of an individual. This is the right what Islam has given, which you want to take away from man and woman. Islam has given that right. They have the right to choose, brother. Okay. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you, sir. Brother, as far as if you say, may Jesus Christ be with me, I follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You say, Shalom Alaikum, it's the verse of the Bible from the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24. I say, Shalom. Shalom. It is Shalom Alaikum. It's not Shalom. Peace, peace be with you, sir. It is Shalom Alaikum. It's not yes, Shalom. Yes, the same. It is Shalom. Shalom Alaikum. Means it's not only Shalom. I'm giving you the reference. Bible, Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 36. It is peace Shalom Alaikum. Yep. Shalom Alaikum. Shalom Alaikum in Hebrew and Arabic. Assalamu Alaikum. May peace alaykum be salam. on you. Yes, brother. But when you said that may Jesus be with me, in what? In teachings? Or in what? As far as teaching the concern, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. For he shall glorify me, he shall tell you things to come. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, said, there is another messenger to come, and his name will be Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I'm following the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. That is the reason I'm following the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you don't want to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it is your problem. You can refer to my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Christianity, you'll get more information. For any question, you can go behind the queue and ask me, brother. Please go behind the queue and you can ask me, brother.